and you're watching the Race Week special from Simpson Race Products outside the Charlotte Motor Speedway. This is the second of two nights in which we've been setting up activities for the Bumper to Bumper 300 Bush Grand National Race on Saturday, and then Sunday's UAW GM Quality 500. Uh, Mother Nature has not cooperated the past two days at all. Everything was wiped out yesterday, and today it hasn't been a very good day either. Winston Cup and Bush Grand National qualifying have been postponed until tomorrow. The Winston Cup cars go on the track at noon, and the Bush qualifying will be right after that. Yesterday's show, if you saw it, uh, Jeff Green said, heck, I hope all the qualifying and practice is rained out because I'm all set for Saturday right now. But the fellow sitting to my left here, I don't suspect Johnny Rumley feels quite the same way, do you? Well, Mark, it's, uh, it's a deal where if I had my choice, I'd say line them up and let's run them because at least we get to start 20th, I think. So, uh, you know, qualifying seems to be a little bit of a struggle, whether it's uh, uh, me trying to adapt the tracks we haven't run that much. Uh, we've only ran one race here, and that was in the spring. So. Uh, I'll put a lot of it on, my, on myself and just say it takes me a little time and uh, we're working with a, a little bit different car than we've run at this type of track so uh, we're trying to adjust to that and we did find some things the last time out. I think we'll be all right. But the truth was that given the rain that we had here today, the remnants of Hurricane Opal, uh, showers come, then they go, then the track gets dry, then you get out for a couple minutes, then it rains again and the activities went well into the afternoon and evening today. Uh, how how disruptive is that to the rhythm that you're trying to achieve, trying to find a, an optimum handling setup for qualifying in the race? Well, it's a little aggravating, especially when you don't know what you're doing to start with. I mean, and that's that's where I'm at. So, you know, I, the, the time factor, uh, you make a change and then it rains. You don't know what it does to the racetrack. Uh, guys that's run here a lot of times, they probably know better than we do. So, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll struggle a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. I think we'll get an hour in the morning and then they line them up. and. Uh, uh, I'm probably a better racer anyway than I'm a qualifier right now. Uh, we're, that's something we're going to work on for next year, but uh, uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday. You know, I, I can't wait to get in the race and go. Well, there's no doubt that you, you're a good racer. I mean, everybody who follows the Bush Grand National Series knows that Johnny won the uh, race up in Dover, Delaware here a few weeks back, and uh, a lot of people were, quote, surprised by the victory. Some called it an upset victory. And uh, we've had a chance to talk since that race, uh, and now you've had a few more weeks to, to, to ponder and savor that. Uh, now that there's a little bit more time between you and the last race, in fact, you've been the most recent race winner mm -hmm. now for, I think, three weeks. Uh, give us your impression of what it's like to win that first race and the congratulations and the atmosphere of being a winner. Well, there, there's guys in the garage area who today had seen me for the first time, and you know, that's pretty neat, uh, you know, giving us congratulations and whatever, but uh, it's like I told the guys at the shop, you know, Monday, it's a deal where we need to forget about it. Uh, that race was two or three weeks ago, and uh, we got three more races to run. That's what we need to look at, and uh, Charlotte is, is now. That's what we need to focus on, not what we did three weeks ago. So I, I'm kind of one who I, real, I, I forget real easily when we won a, a, won a race or run good. Uh, I don't really dwell on that a whole lot. And you've already forgotten the Dover win? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that was... The fun part of it's gone. I mean, the, the racing part is the fun part to me, and that's when you actually do it. So everything after that uh, is okay, but that's not really what I enjoy. It's just the, the, the racing part. And, you know, I, I think I heard Mark Martin say that he wouldn't race if he didn't think he could win. And, uh, you know, I, I, in a way I'm like that, but I like to race. So uh, whether it's for 5th or 10th or whatever, now I don't like to race for 30th because you've got problems. But, uh, you know, racing for the win, that it doesn't get any better than that, and we need to get ourselves in that position again. The last time we talked was just a couple of days after you had won at Dover, and you said, well, it really hasn't sunk in yet. When, it fi when did it finally sink in, and, and then what did it feel like? Well, uh, it, it was pretty neat, I mean, you know, to, to get that part over with. That, that kind of helps uh, Don Beverly and the team uh, for next year on, on some situations there as far as NASCAR uh, points and, and bonuses and whatever. So. Uh, and it kind of sets a tone, I think, for going into winter. Uh, but really, I, I, I'm trying to concentrate on these three races. I'm going to forget about the other part, you know, and, and uh, these guys don't line up. And another thing, too, when you win a race, uh, these guys don't like you anymore. You know, that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> uh, th they, they might smile at you, but that doesn't mean they like you anymore. So uh, I hope they end up hating me before the year's over with, really. I mean, you know, I really do. So that means we're doing something. Oh, God, it, you stole my next line. <laughs> the, uh, the last three races of the year, given that you've had some success now, you know what success feels like, how much hungrier does that make you to, to try to repeat the feat that you accomplished at Dover? Uh, a, a lot. I think here uh, we, we kind of need to prove, we need to run good. 
I mean, and running good doesn't have to win or, or be a top five. We can just be in a top ten. We kind of back up that win to say, hey, that was no fluke. Uh, uh, somebody told me down there today, one of the drivers said, I, di I didn't actually run good at Dover until they put that, you know, that rabbit in front of me, and, uh, or, or so-called rabbit, and, and said I had to go. That wasn't really the case if you watched the race, but uh, uh, we, we, I'll run as good as a car run. I mean, you know, you, you don't get rides, you don't move up in this sport crashing cars. And I don't like to really do that. And I've crashed a few this year, so I'm trying to give the guys at the shop a little break, take it easy on them. But, uh, uh, you know, you can only run as good as the car is going to run, and that's it. And if you try to overdo it, well, you're going to tear it up and probably tear some other guys up. And the guys don't like to run around you then. They lose confidence in you. So I think that's something that's progressed through the year with me. I see guys that probably wouldn't race with me a year ago, they will. And uh, th that's pretty neat. You know, I can learn a whole lot from them. You are not a full-time racer by trade. No. And th you make no secret that you want to be. Given what happened to you at Dover, how has that now helped you move along toward that dream well, of being a full-time racer? Geez, you know, I had to work uh, for the last two weeks roofing, so I can't really say it did a whole lot for me. But. Uh... I snuck away. You know, the good thing about doing that too and owning your own business, you can sneak away. So uh, uh, I did that a little bit. But I, I think as, as a, the months progress, we'll find out something pertaining to 1996 and perhaps on. And, and uh, you know, like I said before, money's not that big object to me. I don't do it for the money. I, I do it because I like to do it. And uh, uh, if you can have a job doing something you love to do, there's nothing better than that. And uh, a lot of these guys get paid good for it. So you would like to become a really lousy roofer and a real unpopular driver, which means you'll be a full-time successful driver. Right, that's exactly right. And, and uh, you know, I had a few people call me and said they wanted to hurry up and get on the list for us to, to do their work before I became a full-time racer. And so <laughs> I'm not going to dwell on that too much. I don't want anybody else calling me. So, uh, uh, you know, it can work out. One final question for you. Uh, your situation for 1996. Uh, you know, like I said, we're going to try to run good here, and uh, you know, I don't, the, all the plans haven't been worked out for 1996. Uh, not to give you a vague answer, but it, it hasn't, and uh, uh, I guess I'm kind of open. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, that's that's the way it's looking, and uh, uh, I hope to be with Don Beverly and uh, uh, you know, Big Johnson and O'Neill and those people. They've done a super job with us, and and we we thought we represented them good. Uh, so, you know, maybe they'll be with us, and, and we're just, we're, we're kind of trying to put things together here in the next couple of weeks and seeing how it goes. Well, no question that stepping into a ride like you did in the early portion of the season and then taking the car to victory lane is something a lot of drivers cannot do. So, folks, you know, here's a driver that can obviously do the job, and, you know, there's always a spot in the race car for a little bit of sponsorship. So there's this, I've taken care of your sales there pitch you for you, and I only want 15% of it. <laughs> Johnny, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll be back with more of tonight's Race Week special from Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Simpson Racing Products store right after this.